Today we're going to talk about how to make paleo pet, which is a diet. Today we're going to talk about how to make paleo pet, which is a diet I came up with that protects your dog from salmonella or E. coli and enables them to eat raw fat and meat as an energy source without the starch. Starch is the cause of so many problems in dogs and cats. So this is paleo pet and basically this is a real quick way to introduce you to how to do it. How do you mix these things? Is it difficult? Is it going to take a long time? No it's not. I'll show you how. We have to start with a meat. And here we have ground turkey, we have ground beef, there's all manner, you can use ground salmon, you can use ground veal, there are all manner of different meats available. The most important thing is you don't want super lean meat because instead of starch as an energy source, which is sugar, you're using fat. So you want your dog or cat to have a certain amount of fat in their diet. Most important, if you cook that fat, they're going to get sick. That's why dogs tell you no table scraps. When you cook fat, dogs and cats can't digest it. When you give a dog a bone that's cooked, they can't digest it. It gets stuck in their belly. When you give it to them raw, they can digest it. It's fine. It's kind of a bizarre thing. So we're using fat as an energy source. Second, we need to use a fiber. These are all different. This is chayote squash, green beans. Today I'll be using broccoli slaw. We've got uh, acorn squash. We've got butternut squash. And all of these uh, offer a great fiber source. Okay, so we're using the vegetables for vitamins and minerals, but also as a fiber. And the fiber is a home to the magic of Paleo Pet, which is probiotic yogurt. A probiotic yogurt means that they're good bacteria, bacteria that preserves things, okay? Bacteria that'll preserve meats in the form of salami or pepperoni or Lunt Jaeger. All of these meats are raw meats that are preserved with bacteria and nitrates. Salt and bacteria mixed together will preserve foods. Like if you want to smoke fish, and salt it. You can preserve it with smoke. But meats are at their very best when they're preserved with bacteria. And good bacteria prevent salmonella, E. coli, etc. What I always tell people is freeze your meat first in small packages. In the morning you get up, you get your bag out from the freezer, you put it in the refrigerator. Then you take your meat out from the day before. It's already defrosted. Okay? Today I'm going to make a real quick meal. So first things first, let me get a little container. This is how fast it is to make paleo pet. So I just got this out of the refrigerator. Okay? So here, I take a handful of this. Got some green beans if I want. I can throw some green beans in there. I'm not going to bother cleaning them. The stems you can if you want. You take a few off. Okay. Put this in the microwave for two minutes. If I want, here. Butternut squash. Okay, these are just sliced butternut squash. Pop this in the microwave for a couple of minutes. Two minutes. If you want a nice tender butternut squash, it's going to be a little different. After the two minutes are up, simple. Here's my cooked broccoli slaw. Here's my meat. And here's my yogurt. The way I mix it up. This is hot out of the oven. It's steaming. I'm going to make, put the meat in here. Okay. I use a pair of scissors sometimes to cut and mix these two together. If you have a large dog, this is perfect, okay? Now the hot vegetables are partially cooking the meat. This is the perfect meal for a dog. Even cats like this. I'm using 50% vegetable 
and 50% meat. Now, if you want to get add some squash or anything like that, you can add that as well. You know, here's just some spaghetti squash. Put that in there as well. Hot spaghetti squash, mixing this up. When everything's reached a final temperature to where you know the vegetables are not boiling hot anymore then and only then can you add your yogurt use a separate fork you don't need much that much yogurt is all that's the bacteria that's going to prevent food poisoning it's going to prevent bad bacteria from growing it's going to make your dog want to eat it because dogs naturally love this stuff Okay, so now we have a combination of spaghetti squash that I cooked in the microwave, some broccoli slaw that I cooked in the microwave, we've got uh, ground turkey, I think it's 15% ground turkey, look at that. What dog wouldn't love that? Now say your dog does not want to eat it, what do you do then? I really don't know of any dog that wouldn't want to chow this down right now. I'm salivating. But there are certain tricks you can do. Here's one. Use other probiotic bacteria. Feta cheese. If your dog's not eating it, take a little bit of cheese and sprinkle it on. Okay? That's not going to harm them. They can't get diarrhea from this. It's fine. Okay? We're still not eating it. Well then break out the Parmesan cheese. Okay, sprinkle some of that on there. Still not eating it? Well then you can start mixing sardines. Okay, here's a smoked oyster. Okay, these are flavors that are intense. Dogs love the smell of smoked fish. They go crazy for it. They go, they go crazy for, for cheese. So these are things you can add. One of my personals is a kipper snacks. This is smoked fish in a can. Just a tiny little piece of this out of the food will make them go crazy for it. Now this is my one thing. You never jump this, jump into Paleo Pet from day one. The first thing you want to do is find out if your dog or cat can handle yogurt. Okay? Some this is a bacteria that lives in the gut. It lives in the colon, in the stomach, in the small intestine, and it's what helps digestion and makes a lot of different vitamins. Give your dog or cat just a little smidgen of this every day to their regular food, okay? It's about that much. Put it and mix it in with their regular dog food, okay? Every day for three or four days. If they like it and go crazy for it, then the next thing you do is to their dry dog food you add a vegetable you, you add vegetables like this you put their dry food in here and then add the yogurt right that's stage one paleo pet stage one paleo pet is where you're using healthy cooked vegetables mixed with regular dry dog food and there's good reasoning for that Dogs have become, dog food and cat food has become far too glycemic. It needs more fiber. If you look at the packages, dog foods are typically 1 or 2% fiber. In nature, dogs and cats have a 30%, 50% fiber meal, every meal they have. When, when a cat eats a bird, it eats it feather and all. Very few feathers are refused. When a, a coyote eats a rabbit, it's the whole thing. They don't leave anything behind. They don't peel a, like, a, like an orange. They don't do that. They eat the whole thing. So you figure that rabbit is one-third of the body weight of that rabbit is partially cooked vegetables. So now, if we give a dog or a cat pet food that's high sugar, high starch, right? Starch is sugar. And we give them... Uh, cooked fats and protein, but
but a high starch, 40 to 50% starch diet with no fiber, that's like Chinese food syndrome. That's like drinking a glass of apple juice and with, that, with no fiber and, and watching what happens. Your blood glucose shoots up and it shoots down. After a meal that's very glycemic with wheat and rice and sweet potatoes, your blood glucose goes up and then it just drops. Fiber manages that. Fiber buffers the effect of starch in the food. Fiber will mitigate some of that sugar rise. It's like eating the apple with the same amount of juice. Right? If you eat the whole apple, your blood glucose is going to go up gently, hang around for a while and drop gently. If you drink just the juice, bam, bam. We're trying to do that with dog food in stage one. You're adding fiber to decrease the glycemic effect of dog food. You're adding healthy fibers with vitamins, but mostly to decrease the glycemic effect of dog food and cat food. Add fiber. It's less intense for them. And it's healthier too. First yogurt, then try adding fiber. Stage two paleo pet, you're going raw meat. Okay, any of these. The best thing is to go to the butcher. Always freeze your meat before you serve it in individual back batches. Freeze it first, thaw it out. Always give ground beef, or excuse me, uh, yogurt with ground meat, like ground uh, turkey and ground beef. Always give a probiotic yogurt. Probiotic yogurts prevent bacterial colitis. They prevent salmonella. It's how we preserve pepperoni and salami. Salami is a raw meat for people that's preserved with a bacteria. When you eat salami, hard salami, you're eating raw meat. Preserved with salt and a probiotic bacteria. And this is the trick. You can preserve meat by giving a bacteria like yogurt. That's paleo pet. That's what started the whole thing. We finally found a way to give pets raw meat safely without endangering children or other members of the household. As long as there's probiotic bacteria present, you don't have to worry about a thing.